Hello and welcome to the seventh video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D endless runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering environmental design and where to get some assets to make this look more like a game. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. And now you can also join as a free member. On with the tutorial. So up until this point we have what is could be considered a sandy surface. So we need to bring in some assets which will make this look better. It'll make it look more like a game rather than a blocky mess that it is right now. Where can we go and get assets? Well, I've made countless videos on where you can get assets, but one of the main places that you should really be going for, an, uh, for any kind of asset if you are new to Unity is the Unity Asset Store. And you can just head to Google, type Unity Asset Store, and it will bring you right to it. I'm not going to go too in depth into the asset store and what you can find here, what you can do, what there is, how much it costs and all that, but we're going to look for some free assets to use for our game. So because it is desert themed at the moment, we want to look for something deserty, and I already kind of know what we're going to have because I've used it before in the game that I made. So we're going to search up here for low poly environment pack. So if you just type it, low poly environment pack hit return and you'll find it just down below you can see mine's kind of grayed out that's because i already have the asset but if you don't have it yours will be like a proper full-on image nice and colorful you can see i got it quite a few years ago so how do we get it from here well this button will either say open in unity or download and whichever it says you just click the big blue button and allow it to open up in Unity. And what that will do is it will open up the package manager. The package manager is, in a essence, it's just a place where all of your assets are stored, not physically on your laptop, but it's kind of like a library of where your assets are. So in this case, it will, for you, download them. It will then add them to your package manager, and you'll be able to click on download here. And what that will do is, after a couple of seconds, it will import everything into Unity when you click on Import. It's a fairly small package, so it shouldn't take too long to import. You'll probably get this box over here, and I'll just bring it over here so we can see a little better. And this is a collection of every asset that is in the pack. Obviously, larger packs are going to have a lot more assets, and if you're only bringing in a couple of textures and one model, it's going to have a lot less. But when you see this, you just click on Import. It'll take a second just to import it, but all it's doing is just adding a folder of all the assets, and you can see it's been created there. Once it's done, we can close our package manager as we do not need it right now. You may get this at the bottom. Um, it says it looks like it's pretty serious, but in actual fact, it isn't. If you do get it, you can just go to console and click on clear. Worth noting that if you click clear and something still appears in the console, then it will prevent you from running the game. If you click clear and it clears everything, there's not a problem, at least not right now. So we're all good to go. So what have we just imported into our game? Well, there's tons of different things. If you go to this folder, you've got a demo, FBX and prefabs. We want the prefabs folder because this is where a lot of the assets that we can use are going to be stored. You can also go into the FBX folder and use them that way. It's entirely up to you. You see at the moment, my Unity doesn't really want to load things up. There we go. Doing it now. So what we can do is we can use these assets however we want. Let's start by dealing with these obstacles that we created a couple of tutorials ago. So if we go to our tree over here, double click in the hierarchy, it will bring us to this. So rather than it be a cube, let's actually turn this into an actual tree. Now to do that, we can either drag and drop a tree from the uh, assets down here into the scene, or we can drag it into the hierarchy. And I'm gonna drag it into the hierarchy. I'm gonna use this tree right here. So drag and drop this tree here, and you'll see that it places the tree exactly where this box is. Now, for all intents and purposes, this tree is far too big for what we need. It's also quite distorted. Now, the reason it's distorted is because the object it's attached to is also an 
not an incorrect shape, but it's not a normal shape, i.e. it is double its normal height. So what that means is if we were to bring our tree out of it, so drag it from here and place it in between crate and tree 01, it becomes its own object. And you can see there that the, uh, the scale is double. So if we reset that back to 1, it sets the tree back to its normal size. However, it's still too big. So what we need to do is resize our tree to fit around where we expect it to be within the tree object, which is going to be this cube. And remember, that's the obstacle collider. That's going to be what we run into. So let's change the scale of this. Let's have it at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. Now, I think that tree looks a little bit more sizable for our game. So I'm going to drag it down to round about there so it doesn't matter if it intersects the floor because at this point there's no collider on the tree itself the collider that we're going to use is already predefined by this cube here so it doesn't matter if it intersects so i am going to now drag tree back onto tree 01 and then on the main cube you can see that it's highlighted i'm going to remove mesh renderer so what we've done here is we have added a physical obstacle and then applied a model to it so when we come around to coding uh, the case of running into the tree, it's going to be the cube that gets interacted with rather than the tree itself. The tree is there just for decoration you could think of. So there's other things that we can do. Uh, we could theoretically create another obstacle if we wanted. So let's create a rock next to the tree. So let's go to game object, let's go to 3D object, and let's go to cube. And I'm going to drag it this way drag it up, and I'm going to shrink the size on the Y so it's a little bit thinner, so 0.5, and let's bring it down to the ground again, and let's increase the size on the X to 2. And now I'm going to drag and drop this rock onto that cube, like so, and you can see once again it's distorted, so you can just undo that, set it to 1, 1, 1, back to its original size, and say, yeah, that doesn't look too bad. So let's bring the rock down to the ground. Maybe let's increase the height of it to 1.5. And then I'm going to reattach that rock onto the cube. I'm going to turn the mesh renderer off on the cube. And there we have a rock. So let's rename this to rock01. And next thing, let's actually add some sides to all of this because at the moment there's just nothing. So there are some cool little models here that we can just drag and drop straight onto our scene. So this terrain, for example, I'm going to just drag and drop right there. And I'm going to turn it around, resize it so as it fits the scene a little better than what it currently does. So in order to do that, I'm just going to move it this way, drag it up ever so slightly to about there. And I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate, and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees on the Y. So that does the complete inverse. So we can move that over here. Now I'm not convinced that the ground is the right color. It, it obviously isn't. We need to modify that a little bit more. Uh, so let's have a look at using this yellow three shader material. So if we look at this color here, let's make a note of this hexadecimal. So we can take that and let's copy that hexadecimal code and let's go to this sand here. Let's go to our sand material down here, click on color and let's paste the hexadecimal code there. Now it is technically the right color. However, because how the materials are rendered together, they do appear different. Remember that this material is set as zero, zero metallic. This material is set as 0 0.77. So if we were to set the material the exact same, you'd see they blend perfectly. That means we can now bring this down and it mixes quite well with our cube, which is our ground. So if we take both of these terrains now, so hold control and select both of those terrains and press D to duplicate, we can then move them this way so as they kind of fit into place. And we'll do that one more time. Hold Control, press D, and they will fit perfectly there.
So now if we press play, we should be able to see that we have actually got something fairly decent to run through. It may not be perfect, but small steps. I'm quite happy with that. So there is a lot more that you could theoretically do to all of this. You know, it is an environment. You do have to design it. Uh, so I'll tell you what, before we go any further, let's add a little bit of feature to, to this. Let's add a plant there. Let's add a couple of them just around just to make it look a little bit more featureful so it's not featureless. Uh, let's add that there. Maybe that over there. And... Let's add a random rock here. Now, we don't need to really do anything with this rock. It's purely decoration because we're never going to be able to interact with this rock. Finally, you can also do one more thing with these. You can increase the height of them to make them look, well, so you can't see out of bounds, really. So let's take this right here and hold control, press D. And let's increase the size of this on the Y to 3. Let's increase it on the Z to 3 as well. And you can see that it is now quite large and it encompasses quite a large section. So what we could theoretically do if we go to our game view is we can do the exact same on the other side because we don't want to be able to see too far out of bounds. So let's take our terrain again, hold control, press D, rotate it by 180 and bring it over this way to about there. Now they do appear a little bit too large for the C, for, well, for this area but don't worry too much about them being too large. What we will end up doing is we will combine all of this to generate more sections. So that is what we're going to do in the next tutorial. We are going to create more sections of this game, and then we're gonna start looking at some C-sharp programming to generate sections as we go along. Because right now, yep, it looks all good and well, but we can see off the edge there, and we easily run off the edge. So we need to generate sections as we run further and further into the level. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And I will see you next time.